Welcome to a beautiful, bright and warm Stafford County showground. Now, Olympic fever has been gripping the nation over the past couple of days, but all eyes are on best in show here at the 50th Hound Association anniversary show. We are going to take you around the show run by hound people for hound people. And the hound show this year is celebrating its 50th anniversary. Now, before we jump into the action, we will bring you up to date with the big winners since our last programme at Windsor. Our K9 specialist for today is Simon Parsons. Now, we're actually going to go straight to Peterborough at East of England, yeah. where Jeff Luscott yeah. awarded Best in Show to an Around the Dog World mm. regular. Indeed he did. This, this was the Petit Bessic Griffon Vendéon, known to us all as Gilly, otherwise officially champion sole trader Peekaboo. At the halfway stage, she was the top dog all breeds for this year, and uh, she has now won uh, five Best in Show all breeds awards and uh, is, I think, a, a great favourite of all, all who have seen these programmes for her one personality and the following week we moved east to west to Indian. national working and pastoral breeds yeah. where Derek Smith actually mm. awarded it to a Newfoundland that we've seen before on around the dog world as well yes this is a Newfoundland called champion sand bears stride and style uh, aptly named dog uh, owned by, by Suzanne Blake uh, at Welks I think where you we've seen him before on these programs he was third in the group but his very next show the great Birmingham national show he was best in show all breeds and became a champion on the day and now he's won another best in show at the specialist show for for the, the working in pastoral breeds obviously a dog for the big occasion because every time he wins in the breed he seems to do well in the all breed ring and then finally simon just last week we saw derek smith awarding best in show again for the second time in as many weeks um, and award it to, to one of uh, the top winners that we've seen before on the program yeah. champion vanatonia you'll see yes this is the toy poodle whose pet name is graham he's uh, had, a, had a wonderful run over the last year or so won three best in show awards at three shows running last year and has now won three more this year giving him a, a grand total of six uh, he is the the closest rival at this stage to jilly for the the top dog award this year so I think the next few shows could be extremely interesting. Now, this is William. He's seven and he actually won his class today. But let's go and take a seat by the main ring for Best in Show. It's judged today by Jill Peake and commentary is from Annette Oliver. So our first dog to be gone over by Jill is the Afghan Hound. And you're quite entitled to support these dogs, you know. They do quite like to be clapped on their way. This is the Afghan Hound Best of Breed winner, 110. The Basenji, 145. The Bassett Folk de Britannia, number 184. <laughs> number 202. The Petit Bassett Griffon Vendion is a breed we see on every programme, with thanks to Jilly, the current top dog leader. We went to find out more about this extrovert hound, so the best place to go was the home of Jilly and sole trader PBGVs. Uh, hi, my name is Gavin Robertson. Um, I, with my wife, have the sole trader Petit Bassett Griffin Von Deans. Um, I've been involved with the breed for since childhood, so over 20, 20 to 25 years. Um, I've been involved with the breed, first started off with Beagles uh, and then progressed on to having one of the early petits in Scotland with my parents and then carried that on myself and then obviously when I was, met Sarah and we had the petits between us. So most of my life I've been involved with the breed. So I, I'm thoroughly hooked and addicted. They're infectious. Um, they're cute puppies like this at this age. They've got a bit of devilment about them. Um, they're not the dog for everybody because they're not perfectly obedient. They are a typical hound where they can have deaf ears when they want. 
but they're full of life and full of love and full of vigour. They're a happy little breed. They give us our, hours of fun, either it be at home, in the house, out, out taking them for walks. Anybody that's had one will never be without them. They do want to make you pull your hair out sometimes, but they're, they're a great little breed. They are a French breed. They have come from a family of from f four Basset breeds. We have the Petit is the smallest, Petit Basset is the smallest. Then we have the Grand Basset Griffin von Dien. Um, and then we have the Briquet, which is the next size up. And then we have the Grand Griffin, which is the largest of the four. Now, we in this country, we only have the Petit and the Grand, which is what you'll see it shows. There are the odd Briquet and the odd Grand Griffin, but they're, they're not kind of club registered. They are primarily a hunting dog. They're a bred to chase rabbit and hare, so they're an active dog. They do require a lot of exercise, but they get on well. They obviously, being a pack breed, they get on well. Interestingly, in, in Sweden, they're used for hunting as well, but they do it singly, where they're, they're going out with a marksman for roe deer. They're certainly a lively dog. You know, they, uh, the easiest way to put them in context is if, if something's going on in the distance and you have a petit and a grand, a petit will immediately go straight in and observe. Their tails are always clicking away like a little clock. They're, they're quite a busy little dog whereas a grand will stand back and observe before it decides whether it wishes to go in there and see what's going on. They don't often want to sit down and do nothing. They do like it every now and then, but they like to be seeing what's going on and running around. So um, we also in this country have uh, the Basset Hound, which is also a French dog, which everybody will know who a, what a Basset Hound is. We have the Fauve de Breton, which again is a French hound. It's a red, a rustic colored hound, very similar size to the Petit, a little bit shorter backed compared to the Petit but um, very similar, same, same height, similar sort of characteristics and temperament. The Basset Hound is still the most well-known through all walks of life, and they are a slightly heavier set, longer set dog than the Petit, which is a short dog. The Basset Fauve is the shortest of the, of the breeds. Um, and they're all very popular. You know, they're, they're, the Basset is the most popular, but the Petits, the Fauves and the Grands are, you know, they're increasing in popularity year by year, um, all of which, mix well, live well in, in somebody's house or can be an outdoor dog. I would say the, the Bassets are more set in their ways and that in some ways they're going through a little bit of a transitional period at the minute. What makes a good Petit? First and foremost, you're not going to have a good show dog if, if, it's, if it's not looked after properly. So the condition of any dog is paramount. Obviously, it goes into a lot of work into the breeding program and how you, how you achieve what you're trying to get. So you've got to start with a good foundation you've got to know in yourself what you're trying to achieve and you're trying to get as close to the breed standard as possible. There is no perfect dog in any, any breed anywhere in the world, but we strive to try and breed the perfect dog. We, we are a firm believer that a dog is a dog and it has to have a life, so they run around freely. If they want to get mucky, they get mucky, that's fine. For a good show dog, it needs to have a good temperament. You know, if it's not got a good temperament, it's never going to be a good show dog, so it's not easy. That's, you know, it's fun and that's part of it, is to try and get the whole package. That is the challenge. That's what. That's why everybody across the world and up and down the country do it week in, week out to try and have the best dog and, and oh, don't you jump off and breed um, breed the best dog that there is. And we've been lucky. We've had some good success. We've had some good dogs that have been appreciated by judges, breeders um, alike all around the world. So um, we we cannot complain. We've done extremely well. The petite two five seven. Now for the Basset Hound. Number 267, the Basset Hound. Two judges again for Beagles. Number 463, the Beagle. Next up for the judge is the Bloodhound. We went to speak to Sue Emerus Jones, one of only two people to take a Bloodhound to win the group at Crufts. Now, Sue, it's a very, a not very popular breed, is it? But, but why is that? It, it, there's no grey area with a Bloodhound. It, either you can't live with it or you can't live without it. They're an untidy breed. They need a lot of exercise. They're willful because they're hounds. They dribble. 
which a lot of people cannot tolerate. What's the, well, the, you've, you've listed a lot of bad stuff, there, I suppose, but there's got to be a lot of massively good positive things. They're a dual-purpose dog, aren't they? Very much so. There are very few breeds that are dual-purpose, and these really are. A lot of our uh, show hounds are worked, um, even show champions are worked. We have four lots of working trials a year. Uh, the hound has to hunt the scent of man over a given distance. The, the ultimate is to have a dual champion, which is a show champion and a working trial champion. And there have only ever been five of those since the 1890s, I think it was. That's incredible. Yes. They're so distinctive looking, aren't they? And very yes. dignified as well. What do you yeah. love about them so much? God knows. <laughs> <laughs> it, they're just, they're just, I don't know, they're so different. People will come and say, oh, well, I've had this breed and that breed. And then you say, well, these are different. And six months later, they will ring up and they say, you're right, they are. But you can't explain how they are different. They just are. And where, where have they actually originated from? They're thought to have come over originally with William the uh, Conqueror. Uh, in a slightly different form, shorter ears, um, possibly a plainer head. They are thought to have originated in Belgium and France. The monks used them for finding lost people out in the various mountains out there. Um, the, the Henrys brought them over as well because they wanted them uh, he wanted to use them to hunt wild boar. They used to send in a much faster hound for the kill, but at least the bloodhound would track the wild boar down. I know it sounds funny, but do you think some people are put off by the actual name, bloodhound? Yes, I think some people probably are. They imagine that they're violent and ferocious, but they're not. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously I'm sure that they like being part of a pack. Yes, very much so. But they do like companionship. They like another dog, but they love another bloodhound. The Bloodhound, 518. The Borzoi, 544. This is the dog, number 643. 59 of them. Judged by Mrs. Cooper. OK, I am joined by three generations here of Dachshund breeders. Obviously, this little one here, not quite a breeder yet, but breeder possibly of the future. Emily Mitchell, mother, uh, four weeks old now. Yes. Um, fantastic. But you're actually showing today um, Logan, your dog, uh, one best of breed in long-haired Dachshunds. Yes. Tell us a little bit about him. Um, he's now three years old. He's been top long yes. since he was a puppy the um, last two years. He's now got 16 cc's. Um, his son is currently the top long-haired dachshund, so he's actually been beaten by his son and junior, but he's very, very full of himself, loves showing. And tell us a little bit about the long-haired dachshund. Where do they sort of originate from? They originate from Germany. Um, the smooth-haired dachshund was the original dachshund. And they, they were breed with Cocker Spaniels, um, and they have a, a calmer temperament than the smooth-haired dachshund, and obviously they got the coat from them as well. Well, your mother is Fran, um, and obviously Bronia is your affix, um, as the culmination of the affix for the family. Now, just tell us a little bit about the other varieties. Obviously, we talked about the long hair there. Um, is it just a case of that there's kind of, they mixed it with different sort of varieties of dogs to get the wire, the smooth and the long? I believe they did. Uh, I think the wire head came down from, they added a little bit of Dandy Dinmont to give the wire coat. I know the longs can make very good water dogs. I remember when I was a, when I was a mere child, when I was beating on the moors for the grouse, they were actually picking them out of the water. There's a man with two long-haired dachshunds, and that was how I first got to see them and fell in love with the longs. So why do they have the, the miniature versions? The miniature versions were bred to um, chase rabbit, whereas the, uh, the larger versions were for the badgers. And so you're more associated with the long-haired uh, variety, but have you had experience of any of the other types as well? Yes, uh, we've had champions as a kennel, my mother, Dorothy Hanny, myself and my daughter. Uh, we've had champions in miniature smooths, miniature longs, miniature wires and standard longs. And is there any sort of um, difference in temperament as well? Can some of them be feisty and some of oh, them be more yeah. fun? Or? The, standard, the standard longs, in my experience, they're the most laid back of the varieties they're quite you know friendly happy to go along with whatever 
the the mini longs are a little bit more um, standoffish, but the mini smooths and the mini wires are definitely go get them, little uh, people. Well, maybe um, this young little lady might grow up to do the same. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank so you with the miniature. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us, ladies, and um, have a happy hound show. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Number six four three, the long hair Dachshund. Number six eight eight, the miniature long hair Dachshund. Smooth hair Dachshunds. Number eight hundred eight zero zero, the dog. Chosen from an entry of 56, making 58 entries. The Smooth Hair Dachshund. Miniature Smooth Hair Dachshund, number 841. See, she's brought the fan club. This is the male, number 930. The wirehead accent, 930. Miniature wirehead axes were judged by Gavin Robertson. The miniature wirehead accent, 996. This is Liz Cartledge, Judge Deerhounds. The Deerhound, 1087. But this is a foxhound judged by Trish Wells, seven of them, and this is a bitch number 1137. Our next best of breed is the famous figure of a breed known for its speed, the Greyhound. But there is far more than meets the eye, as Rita Bartlett, a lady heavily involved in showing and racing, explains. I'm Rita Bartlett, I breed greyhounds. Probably the nicest breed that you'll ever come across, as you can see. Um, I've been involved with them since I was five years old because my father raced greyhounds. Our last racing greyhound died and because a racing dog is considerably more expensive than a show dog, we decided that when we were on holiday, we'd get the local paper the only breed that was available was an Irish setter. I decided that if I were going to show dogs, I might as well go and get a greyhound. They are the easiest breed to actually keep. They're clean, they're quiet, they're reasonably responsive most of the time. <laughs> they can be very difficult when they want to be, having very, very deaf ears. There's two dogs here, one of them a stud dog. And they live very, very happily together. The characteristics are just unbelievable. They're good-tempered, easy to get on with strangers, incredibly good with children, and the ideal dog, really, for anybody to own, particularly the elderly, because they're very, very lazy, as you can see. Um, not the most enthusiastic dog once they've had a good run round in the paddock. They came over from the ancient Egyptians. Many, many, many years ago, they were only allowed to be owned by royalty, and they were basically used for hunting to provide their lordship's lunch. Basically, the difference of, between a racing greyhound and a showground is the racing dogs were bred to run round in a nice oval. The show greyhounds are just bred to look pretty. They've got a, a wider, broader head, slightly narrower in muzzle, much, much stronger neck, less angulation in the front. Their shoulders are far further laid back, much less depth in the brisket, usually a lot wider in front, more spring of rib, 
slightly smoother back line and far less angulation behind. 99% of them are very low in hock and a much, much stronger tail. And this is what really judges need to actually look at is the fact that they are a totally different type. Not a different breed, just a different type. Every track has got a rescue kennel now and every owner has to pay a percentage of their um, dog's prize money to the care of racing greyhounds. Every dog that is taken into kennels, when it's ready to be rehomed, the homes are vetted and the people are vetted and the people are kept in contact for quite some considerable time afterwards to make sure the dog is healthy and happy. The Greyhound, 1160. The Hamilton Server, number 1179. 22 Ibethan Hounds here today. Ibethan Hound, 1201. We're now looking at exhibit number 1298, the Irish Wolfhound. The Norwegian Elk Hound, 1324. Judge of the Otter Hounds was Mrs. Marianne Nixon. The Pharaoh Hound, 1396. Our next exhibitor has a Rhodesian Ridgeback. The Rhodesian Ridgeback, 1472. Now for the Salukis. They were judged by Mrs. Mary Parker. The Slugi, judged by Mrs. Jill Morris. The last and most popular of breeds in the group today is the Whippet. We caught up with 14 year old Luke Johnson after the breed judging today. He's the youngest handler to take a dog to a group placing at Crafts. Luke, um, you've been involved with two hound breeds, the Saluki yeah. and the Whippet, and you're dressed in pink today. Can you explain why you're dressed in pink? Um, the Colony Kennel in Ireland, the Whippet Colony Kennel, decided the, to try and get everybody to dress in pink to raise money for the breast cancer charity. Just a bit of fun and they thought they'd do it at the hound show. And you've obviously joined in and yeah. looking very smart there. Yeah. But it was quite cool earlier because we were talking, weren't we, by the ringside, yeah. and it was like a sea of pink. <laughs> it was, it was just swarmed, pinked, yeah. Now, obviously, you've, I've, I've just talked about sort of the success you've had the past 18 months. Um, you actually, is it top whip at the moment that you've gone? Um, it was after Windsor, yes. I'm not sure now, but she was top whip it after Windsor, yes. And Rafi was top Saluki, yeah. And Rafi's this lovely Saluki that you handle. Mm -hmm. um, what's the difference in handling the two breeds? It's, whip it is more like you're uptight, like when you're moving them, the lead needs to be more tight where Salukis they're not exactly the kind of breeze that you would move with a tight lead it's more loose and it's obviously faster and yeah you've got to like sort of go with the flow and not try and stop with the Saluki yeah. So how long ago did you actually start handling dogs? Oh um, six and a half years now start when I was about seven and a half eight yeah. What would you suggest and what tips and advice would you give to other young people that maybe might be watching this and think I'd like to give that a go? Just 
when you do give it a go, stick with it and don't get knocked down if you say don't win the first time and keep going at it because you will get better, just like I did. I've, I didn't win for ages, but I just kept on going with it and I'm now I'm here. <laughs> So the ground of the petite. The long hair Daxon, six four three. And the smooth eight zero zero. And the miniature smooth eight four one. The miniature wire, 996. The deer hound, 1087. Saluki, 1506. And the Whippet Ditch, 1662. Jill's obviously um, very confident of her decision already.
Come on, ladies and gentlemen, the Best in Show winner of the Ham Show, the 50th anniversary show, champion silver ring of Peekaboo, the Petite. So best in show at Hound Show last year was Jilly, the PBDV, and she's gone and done it again. Jilly's won best in show here at the Hound Show at the Stafford County Showground. Now, Sarah, you know, she's having such an incredible run. We speak to you so much now. <laughs> I know you're all bored. <laughs> <laughs> so what was it like in there today? We actually had a bit of thunder around and that yeah. obviously didn't phase her. Nothing seems to phase her, unfortunately. Even she even wanted the sweetie wrapper in the middle of the ring on her up and back. So, um, but nothing phases her in the slightest. She just doesn't care. She lot, loves it all. A lot of people say the Hound Show is sort of very, very special because it's the Hound Show. It's the Hound Show for Hound people, I suppose. Yeah. Does it feel real special today to win? It's always the show. It's, I guess it's like with any of the group shows. It's always the show that everybody wants to win, whether it be hounds, terriers, gun dogs. It is the one when it's your group that you do want to win, and to win it two years in a row is just unbelievable. It's just amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. So the Whippet was chosen reserve best in show here at Hound Show. I'm joined by Mike Howgate and Yvonne. Yvonne, uh, co-owners. Now it was a bit interesting in there about Joe because the judge was going over the dog on the table and the commentator said it was a dog and then yeah, it was a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> that obviously doesn't happen a lot in dogs, does it? No, not normally. No, we were late in the ring because of the size of the entry of whippets and we were near the end of the group before we got in there. Now Yvonne, just tell us a little bit about Joe and some of their past wins. Um, she's she's won very well since she was a puppy. She was top puppy in 2009. She was top top whippet last year. Um, she's had a group one placing in a best opposite sex in show. To go reserve best in show at Hound Show is pretty cool. It is. Oh, it's amazing. Brilliant. I couldn't believe it. I was jumping up and down with <laughs> excitement and my friend was like, oh. <laughs> Many congratulations to you both. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank, Thank you. you. The Afghan number one zero one, and it's a bitch. Come on, back with Mark. Come on, see this. Good girl. Now for the beagle, which is a bitch number three eight nine. Longhair Dachshund, six five four. This is a bitch puppy. The miniature smooth Dachshund, number eight five four, which was a dog, and now the miniature wire, which is a bitch, number nine eight two. Norwegian Elk Count, number 1340, this is a bitch puppy. And then the Pharaoh Hound, number 1369, which is a dog. She's making a cut. Well, she's pulling them out, not in any order. So here comes the Afghan and the Beagle. Daxi and the Pharaoh Hound. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, put your hand together. So let's, let, let's see them do this um, last lap around before a final decision is made. We've got the Afghan Hound, the Pharaoh Hound, the Beagle, and the miniature wire hair Dachshund. And the winner of the 50th anniversary Hound Show Best Puppy in Show is going to be the Beagle. Number 389, the Bitch Puppy. And in the second spot comes the Miniature Wire Hair Dachshund, number 982. Then the Afghan, number 101, and the Pharaoh Hound, number 1369. And the winner, this is the puppy, the Hound Show winning puppy is... Dabrikar Martina.
Escobedo. Well done, all of you. What a day to remember. So, Simon, we've dodged the showers and there's been rolling thunder around in these yeah. hills, haven't there? Yeah. But we've managed to get some sunshine right at the end here of Hound Show. Yeah. Uh, what's it been like for you and what did you make of that lovely group? Uh, the Hound Show is always one of my favourite shows. It, the, the people are special, the dogs are extra special and uh, that we were lucky in the end with the weather. So a great a great day. Uh, looks, looks, looks a nice group. I'm sure Jill will uh, let us know exactly what she thought of it. The wonderful Jilly was, was there yet again and two years running best in show at the hound show not something that's been achieved all, all that often and of course best puppy was also a dual winner as well best yeah. puppy in show at windsor was yeah. the beagle yes yes i've had my own this little beagle for some time now and again she's a, a particularly a special personality she's got that lovely bond with with, with her owner uh, a bright future looks on the cards so yeah. <laughs> So I'm delighted to be joined by the 50th Hound Association Championship Show Best in Show Judge, Jill Peak. Thank you. Now, thanks for joining us right at the end of the day. I know you've got a dash, but just tell us what your thoughts were on Best in Show there. Obviously, you've judged many hound groups before, but you looked like you did it quickly and you didn't hang about, so you must have been known what you were looking for. Well, yes, I was looking for soundness and general type and this bitch just excels in that. No, all four really that I had the one to four, they were really, really lovely dogs and the young deer hound, you know, is very, very promising. So, you know, I was really thrilled with it all. It was so just Jilly, excellent. you've judged before many times? I have, I gave her a second CC when I did it at Crofts and then I gave her the group, I think, at three counties from memory. And then again today, she's just hard to beat, you know. But of course, the whippet was beautiful also. And then you had the puppies that came in after that. Yep. Um, obviously, there was a couple in there that were being a little bit naughty, but of course they can be, can't I they? I did. I, well, I forgave that because they're babies, you know. But um, I thought the beagle, being my own breed, I'd be hard on anyway. And I just thought she was outstanding. She was beautiful, beautifully put together. Um, and the, the second was the mini wire, who I'm sure will go real far. You know, she's an absolutely beautiful little bitch. Um, and the others, they were just lovely. The little fair hound was only six months old, you know, so I was really, really pleased. So was this a memorable hound show for Absolutely you? Absolutely so, yes. And, you know, it was an honour to do it, being the 50th anniversary of the club, you know. So I'd just like to thank everybody for inviting me. Well, as we are coming to the end of the year again, we thought we should take a quick look at the current leaders in the top dog table. As you can see, at the top is Jilly, the PBGV, on 102 points, with Graham, the toy poodle, a little way behind, but on quite a roll on 68 points. And then there's quite a battle, heating up for third, with six dogs covered by 17 points. Currently, in third is the Irish Water Spaniel, Whistle Stops, Elements of Magic, Merlin, who won National Gun Dog today, few points clear of the Pekingese, Yaki U.R. Cantona followed by Copy Mere Celebration, the Smooth Coated Chihuahua, and Ragus Merry Gentleman, the Norwich Terrier. In seventh, we have the King Charles, maybe Theo, and eighth, Salty Dog of Tampa Bay, the Labrador. There's a six point gap to the Scottish Terrier, Stuane Florette, who we saw win Pup of the Year earlier this year in ninth. And rounding off the top 10 is the Newfoundland, Sam Bear's Stride and Style. So congratulations to Jilly, the PBGV. Thank you very much for watching. We are out next time at Welsh Kennel Club, where we'll take a closer look at some of the breeds in the Gundog group.